the death of Dexter Reed. You're going to see a lot of headlines like this one where that says police fire 96 shots in 41 seconds, killing black man during traffic stop with this photo of Dexter Reed and some family members. You're going to see some news clips that look like this one. He had just bought his new car three days before that. And he was just riding around in his car. He said, Mom, I'm going for a ride. And they killed him. They killed him. Okay, so that's painting a particular story there. Let's see another clip of Dexter Reed's mother on CNN. They took my son away from me. <laughs> he ain't got that no more. I don't know what I'm going to do without him. He's already dead. Why you study shooting him like that? <sighs> they killed my son and they killed me too. Okay. So you're going to see the stuff. It says, you know, 96 shots, 41 seconds, multiple officers involved in the death of uh, Dexter Reed. And you're going to get a majority of headlines, I think, right now uh, until we clear this up. And we're going to do that very shortly where they say, you know, this guy was killed during a traffic stop. And uh, I can't believe your your crime really is living while black, which is what a lot of people say uh, when stuff like this and stories like this come out. And he just wasn't wearing a seatbelt. This was a routine traffic stop. How dare you kill a black man? This is clearly the result of, you know, racist officers who decide to commit crimes. But it turns out uh, Dexter Reed had a firearm and decided to shoot at police officers first, actually striking one of the officers in the arm. And for some reason, that's not being placed at the forefront of these stories when they're being talked about, when they're being reported on. I'm actually going to show you some headlines here and a big shout out to Jesse Waters of Fox News for pointing this out and sharing this in his coverage of Dexter Reed's death. After he was pulled over, he shot at police first and they returned fire. His gun was recovered and he'd emptied his clip. Look at these headlines. Seatbelt violation ends with black man dead on Chicago street after cops fired nearly 100 bullets. Police fire 96 shots in 41 seconds, killing black man during traffic stop. Deadly Chicago traffic stop where police fired 96 shots raises serious questions about use of force. Not one of those headlines tells you that Reed is the one who started the shootout. I'm personally devastated to see yet another young black man lose his life during an interaction with the police. All Reed had to do was comply. Uh, and yeah, I, it seems like in looking at this case that that is in fact true, that all this individual had to do was comply. And I had sort of had whispers about this happening. I'll tell you a little brief story. Uh, somebody called me and said, you know, I just got off a call with somebody who actually works in Chicago and is part of like community relations in Chicago. And this person who was part of community relations in Chicago called them and said, Oh my gosh, tomorrow's going to be, you know, a hellish day. I think there's going to be riots in the streets. There's going to be protests. You know, this is going to be the next George Floyd. Everybody's going to be up in arms over what just happened. I can't tell you what it is, but the body cam footage is being released and this looks horrible for police. This is a, hor a horrible, heinous act of, of police brutality. And presumably this person had seen the body cam footage and knew about the investigation and the reporting uh, surrounding, you know, this traffic stop internally from the the police themselves come to find out the very next day this uh, is released the investigation notes and what they found during this investigation is released and dexter reed fired first at the police officers not only that emptied a clip so who knows you know how many of those shots he is responsible for i think the investigation is ongoing in this case and we're going to find out more details as uh time goes on but struck a police officer then you go and read about some of the details here uh, about what was happening when this person was pulled over. It says in one video, an officer wearing a hooded jacket, a baseball cap and a tactical vest with a badge on it approaches the driver of a white vehicle with dark tinted windows. Roll the window down, roll the window down. The officer tells the driver. The driver initially rolls his window down and then kept rolling it back up. Why would you do that? 
If a police officer is telling you with very clear instructions, roll the window down, roll the window down, why would you do that and then roll the window back up? The police officer states, what are you doing? Don't roll the window up. Do not roll the window up. The officer pulls on the driver's door handle, which appears to be locked, and then draws a gun. Which, okay, let's, a lot of people are going to say, this is excessive use of force on behalf of the police officer. Why would you start pulling your gun on an individual who you are pulling over for, you know, not having a seat belt during a routine, a routine stop? If I'm a police officer and I'm telling somebody, roll your window down, roll your window down, they proceed to do that and then start rolling the window back up, what am I going to think that individual is doing? I'm going to think that that individual is hiding something and possibly a weapon. Now, if I try to open the car door and the door is presumably locked, a lot of people are gonna go taser, taser, taser. The windows rolled up, the car door is locked. You can't get in the car door. Does it make sense, maybe if you are in, in the mind of a police officer right now, to pull your gun just in case this person is rolling their window up in order to pull out a weapon? And we have no idea what this cop is seeing in this moment or what the officer is recognizing is happening. But even if this was just an instinctual call, the officer would have been right because Dexter Reed did in fact have a weapon in the car and was going to fire at the police officers. So, okay. Let's, let's keep reading here. The officer pulls on the driver's door handle, which appears to be locked. We saw that. Unlock the doors now. Unlock the doors now. The officer screams as another officer shouts the same demand. So now they're in tandem telling this guy, unlock the doors, unlock the doors. The driver apparently says, okay, I'm trying to. Seconds later, as the officer retreats from the vehicle, gunfire breaks out. Dozens of gunshots are then heard in rapid succession. Other body cam videos show at least two other officers firing toward Reed from across the street in a residential neighborhood. Both of those officers paused to reload their guns after a barrage of gunfire ends. Reed's body is found lying face down behind the vehicle. He started shooting at us, an officer said in one of the videos. About a minute later, an officer examines Reed's bull bullet-ridden car. The gun's right there, the officer says, shining a flashlight into the vehicle. One officer was shot in the wrist during the gunfire and was hospitalized in good condition. Chicago Chicago police said, and now multiple agencies are investigating whether the officer's actions were justified. And they did, in fact, find a gun on the scene, which, interestingly enough, if you go and read something like this from The Washington Post, they in one sentence mention that, uh, you know, Reed, you know, uh, it's, it's stated that Reed shot first. And then they go and give what they deem to be a play by play of what happened in the body cam footage and fail to mention uh, in that play by play that he did in fact shoot first. And s for some reason, the Washington Post, which is meant to be a reputable news source, leaves out the fact that a gun was recovered on the scene with an empty clip. How is that possible? And if you're reading these headlines that are telling you a black man is shot during a traffic stop, 96 shot fired during uh, this, this routine traffic stop with a black man, what do you think the media is trying to get you to do when you read a headline like that? They want you to be upset. They want you to overreact. They want you to protest. They want you to riot. They want to promote a narrative that this country is breaking down, uh, you know, on the premise of race, that this is white officers who are targeting black men, when in reality, if this individual had just complied, rolled down the window, gotten out of the car, you know, explained why he wasn't wearing a seatbelt, this probably would never have happened. But this individual decided to fire on police officers. Now, we can argue back and forth as to whether or not 96 shots in the wake of somebody shooting at you is excessive use of force or if it's reasonable or if multiple police officers needed to respond to the, the, the gun being fired. I would argue that we don't know what's going on in these cases. And if an officer screams out that the person inside the car is now shooting, I imagine you're going to do whatever is in your power to stop that person from killing your officers, especially when we have stories coming out today like that out of Memphis, where an 18 year old suspect just shot and killed a police officer in a, a shootout. So when you are in a situation like this, as an officer, where somebody is threatening your life, you have another officer who is already injured by gunfire, what do you think you're supposed to do? I'm pretty sure you're supposed to neutralize the perpetrator. And where they're trying to paint it out as if these police officers are racist, to me, it seems very cut and dry. Dexter Reed made 
a choice, a stupid choice. And when you make stupid choices and you play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. It seems as though this would have been a very normal traffic stop had he just complied with the officers and gotten out of his car or done whatever it is that they asked him to do. But no, that could not be the case. But the media wants you to think that they are targeting black men that they somehow knew when they pulled this guy over that they were going to uh, shoot and kill him. And the officers just got lucky. They just got lucky that Dexter Reed just so happened to have a gun in his car and just so happened to in- unload it on them uh, when they were already intending to go and take this, take this young black man's life. Very, very lucky day for those officers. I'm sure your average police officer wakes up every single day and goes, you know what? I want to kill a black man today or I want to get in a shootout where other officers are injured, have my life threatened by a suspect just so I can what rid the world of another black man. Are we truly thinking that this is how police officers think? I I guess so, because there's people who are pushing this narrative and sharing this and sort of equating this young guy to George Floyd, even saying things as far as like, oh, I know he had a gun, but they didn't have to use such excessive force in the wake of him having a firearm or him shooting at police officers. Y'all, make it make sense. I just had to clear up this story because it's just so ridiculous that the media will knowingly lie or omit information with a very clear intent to stoke the flames of racial divide in this country when we are just about to head into a new election cycle. And you know exactly why they're doing it. So I want to make it clear that that's what they're doing and uh, and clear that up for you guys And, and, you know, just as a little bit of advice for anybody who is in an altercation or not even a conflict, just a routine traffic stop with police officers, comply. I don't care if you know damn well the the officer is somehow, uh, you know, a bad apple within the department. It's probably within your best interest to comply with whatever they're asking you to do, especially if it's just to roll down your damn window. And those are my thoughts on Dexter Reed. Glad we could clear that up.